Hello and welcome. Uh, this is Kishkisan, and today I will be talking about a deck that is very close to my heart, that is Moon Purple. So this is a deck that I have been playing um, ever since. Well, ever since the purple patch, and I've been iterating on it a lot. And the main identity of this deck is that it plays Night Market along with Disc. And um, the deck has went through a lot of iterations, and I will link a lot of the iterations in the description. And I also wrote a, uh, I wrote a, an article for cryptic gaming uh, about the de about the previous iteration for the deck the pre-expansion iteration for the deck and uh, the deck is more or less not that changed from the previous one as I think that uh, the, the the deck is used to be quite solid pre-expansion and now it just gained some more tools to help it so uh, the deck just as every purple deck plays four racers, and since we play disc, we're playing a lot of the uh, discard fodder uh, minions that generate discard fodder to help us through the early turns before we set up our night market. Now we don't always have to discard these items. Sometimes it's better to use them to get favorable trades or to heal our minion after a favorable trade, or even the battle chef item, which is really Battle Chef is just underplayed. It's, it's very underplayed because the item is insane. Uh, it can allow you to take a lot of good trades and uh, have your minion survive. Uh, Sword Saint is something that I really dislike to play generally, but it kind of feels necessary against some of the aggressive decks like Green Purple Spirits. The Night Market is really how the deck draws and it, uh, and the, the, the ramens specifically are how the deck can do a lot of damage, especially when you're at a lower uh, life total than your opponent. It can be a reasonable strategy to, to just be at a lower, to, to, to lure the opponent to leading you to a lower life total and just keep smiting them with the ramens that you accumulate. It can work, the deck can work for with that, but uh, usually the deck would rather fight for the board than, 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 than prefer to be lower on, on life total. And Hotel Barkeep is just its just an auto-include in any uh, purple disc deck. It's, it's just the powerful ramen is really powerful. Now, the new card here is Judo Gerudo. Uh, I really like... I, I mean, I wouldn't play Judo Gerudo in any other deck, but uh, since we're playing Smite, we don't really have the luxury of playing Shinobi of Smoke. And uh, the previous iteration of this deck used to play the Shinobi of Fire. But um, this deck is pretty mid-rangey, so Shinobi of Fire is kind of very aggressive for this deck, as it always wants to go face, and um, it doesn't trade favorably at, at all. Like, if the opponent can remove it, they usually remove it on their own terms, not on my terms. Uh, unlike the Judo Garuda, which is, at the very least, a 3-4, and uh, it positions in the same way that how you would position for Pentacle anyway. So uh, it's really the, the it might as well be a it might as well be a vanilla three four for three, uh, which is really how I often use it. But uh, I I prefer this to a cold blooded killer. Where's the cold blooded killer? Because well, the cold blooded killer is kind of three health, which is uh, which is not very good for with with disc because uh, the opponent can just trade into three health easily because the slayer just works against it. So that's my concern about three health minions with disc. And uh, as a rare, you will often not be able to forge it anytime soon. Like you want to play it on three, you don't want to forge it, especially that uh, you only have two copies of it. So it's kind of very hard to play on three if you decide to forge it. And even then, like. Um, and the, the card is just so much stronger with the forge that it feels it feels it feels weird to run, you know, going to forge it. And uh, the four drops didn't really change much. I, I I tried a bit of the shinobi of chains 
But uh, I think it's too slow, and the fact that you need your the the enemy minion to be on an unoccupied unoccupied to be on the opposing unoccupied lane makes it very hard to play. Like you can definitely shut out a minion from the game completely, but uh, you just it just feels very slow and. Uh, yeah, there are much better options for a mid-range deck. And uh, next, we also play the Pentacle of Flavor. Pentacle of Flavor is a really good card. Uh, we usually use it as a finisher uh, by using one of the overrun items that we can get uh, from the deck. Uh, so uh, the way overrun works with this is that if we attack head-on, we can deal six extra damage. Uh, with overrun, this damage can really go face. So that's what we really like about this. Uh, the Slayer change makes this less insane than it, than it used to be, as it usually previously it was like Pentacle with overrun would usually just end the game right there, right, right now. But now uh, the the Slayer nerf makes it a little bit less bursty, but it's still a lot of burst damage out of nowhere, so that's really good. Uh, Jinsuk is uh, kind of maybe you can switch it out for something else if you want. But I really like Jinsuk for her movement ability, as it can set up lethals very easily. And the minus two minus two ability is also not that bad. It's 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 often just uh, it's, it's often can lock the opponent out of playing any minions unless they deal with the Jinsuk. Uh, Coxinga is really one of the best mythics in uh, in the game right now. Uh, the the ability to deal eight damage to enemy artifacts, the boning cruelty spell, and the move, the enchantment movement they're all just it's just a premium mythic that should really be played in any slowish purple deck. And uh, yeah, it's just it's just insane. The Terrigans are as always the one of the best mid range units in the deck. A Celestial Dragon is just the the the, the he just wants to go face all the time, and he's really nice to end games. And the Gamma Sinin is one of the cards that I didn't expect to be running in a deck like this, which is kind of mid-rangey, but not really. It just wants to go face with the big bodies that he can play. And Gamma Sinin doesn't look fast, it doesn't look beefy. It's a 6-mana 5-6, but the fact that it comes back to my own hand is insane. And I can give it overrun with one of my items anyway. So it can work as a blocker, it can work as an attacking uh, attacking minion, it can work in multiple ways and the opponent it just can break it can be breaking can be back breaking to deal with the with a gamma sinin if the opponent doesn't have the appropriate answers. And at six mana and one gem makes it an insane minion in general that every deck every purple deck should be consider should consider running. But the gems don't really matter much for mono decks. Not in general, maybe there it matters with some cards, but in this deck they don't really matter. And the Lantern Colossus is more of a meta choice right now in comparison to Risen from the Deep. Risen from the Deep is very good as well, and it's uh, the the lack of Overrun on the Rise for Risen from the Deep is one of the considerations why I currently prefer Lantern Colossus, especially with being a lot of triennial patrols on ladder, but Risen from the Deep is uh, is also very good. Uh, but I kind of prefer the Lantern Colossus more. And uh, the last thing that I want to talk about is why we don't run Perfect Great. Well, uh, the deck doesn't have that much draw, and it will often be in top deck mode, and uh, and uh, you will often run out of cards by turn six, and that is when we start top decking. So uh, having an 8 mana card means that it would be pretty hard to play for this deck. I think the 6 mana is just the magic number for this deck. We don't have that many 6 mana cards, but when we hit 6 mana we usually struggle a bit to burn more than that, as we want to be playing whatever we top deck. Uh, unless of course we have the Night Market which eases a lot of this because uh, it can allow us to burn more and sink our mana into disc instead and just keep drawing cards and dealing a lot of face damage. So yeah, um, this is one of my favorite decks, and I want to show some gameplay that I had of this deck. All right.
So the first game is against Garen, and um, he's playing yellow green control spells. And uh, this is a slow deck that I know won't be playing a lot of stuff. So I also take it slow. I could have played. Uh, I could have uh, waited on that. I could have. Uh, I could have waited on uh, flipping disc. If normally I don't usually like to flip disc on turn one, because uh, there's just no use for it. It often just gives the opponent uh, might give the opponent good trades. But this is YG, and they don't really play anything. And uh, yeah, so I just flip this whenever I can to draw cards, and because I know this is going to be a long game. So I prefer also to play the Smite instead of uh, instead of uh, playing the Battle Chef, but that's because uh, I was waiting for the opponent to play a Venom Fang or something so that I can uh, lure it and then play the Battle Chef. But the opponent didn't play it anyway, so uh, I just went with the 3-drop and... Then the opponent just goes away, goes ahead and just kills it. And we draw the Coxinga, and we notice the opponent has an artifact at 6 life. And the Coxinga is going to be very useful for that. It's, you will see that this Coxinga, Coxinga is actually what carries this game. Uh, the opponent just removes the minion. It's just, it's just how YG goes. And this is where we start. This just removes one. Coxinga just removed one artifact. And then the opponent, uh, it do doesn't really remove him. He gives me another uh, artifact kill. And I make sure to get another Coxinga because this already seems like uh, this is going to be a lot of value for Coxinga. Not only that, but the uh, Bone and Cruelty spell uh, is going to help me deal a lot with the, uh, with the big stuff that the YG decks like to play in the late game. So right now we just cleared the artifact and we're gonna get him back because I played the 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 homeward crown from God of Gamers on Coxinga. He's gonna be shuffled into the top three cards in my deck, and uh, so we we're gonna see him uh, again soon. But until then, we're just playing the. Uh, I, I prefer to play the Night Market rather than play the uh, the uh, the Terragon. But uh, maybe I was afraid of. Investing too much into a board when I don't have a good hand or when I don't have a full hand and the opponent just playing misanthropia or or a murmur and that would really suck for me to invest and then have the board being dealt with efficiently. So I just take it slow and knowing that this matchup is a very slow matchup and uh, there's no there is no punish for going slow really. And uh, this is one thing that is very concerning here. Playing the, uh, the 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 bold mountain can 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 be very annoying because uh, this just this can just uh, return back a lot of their high value uh, spells like the Anhelis, which are going to be very annoying to deal with, as well as the, uh, the misanthropia or the murmur. Most importantly, or most backbreaking for a deck like mine is the murmur because. We go. We it's just it just hurts us so a lot when we don't run a lot of the movement. Uh, so yeah, I, I I prefer to just develop the uh, the Jinsuk and remove the misanthropia and remove the the uh, occupant of the uh, play of the of the bold mountain. The point just keeps removing my stuff, and here I decide to just I I find my Coxinga again and I decide to invest just the Terragon. And the opponent plays, the opponent plays the uh, the Ico here. And the interesting thing is that I'm at eight mana, and it's winter. We're gonna have a very nice bone and cruelty here. Yeah, so the bone cruelty just kills the minion in uh, in uh, in winter, and the opponent has the wonder drugs ready, and he's gonna use the wonder drugs here. Yeah, he does. But uh, because of how the deck is built, they can't really wonder drug as well as misanthropia, so they only could play the wonder drugs here, and I get to have another turn with the Coxinga. I'm actually not sure why they removed uh, the Terragon rather than the Coxinga, but maybe because uh, they didn't want to deal with the constant value generation of the tight market. But either way, I think removing the Coxinga was more 
uh, important than removing the the the, the tarragon. Uh, but yeah, the gamma sen in here is is uh, very backbreaking for the opponent because uh, it's just gonna keep coming back, and whatever the opponent, well, however the opponent tries to deal with, is just going to come back to my hand again, and I don't lose value. I don't ever lose value by playing the gamma sen in here, especially since uh, yellow green doesn't really have a way to banish, uh, except an heli. And Heli, uh, but and he, the opponent just used and Heli. And Heli isn't really banishing, but it's just shuffling at the bottom of the deck, so it might as well be. So that Coxinga has already generated a ton of value in this game, and uh, yeah, the opponent has no uh, answer here except to uh, except to miss the board and uh, I invest in the board this way so that. Uh, the opponent is at 10 health, and I'm going to deal 4 damage, so he's going to be at 6. So, uh, even if the opponent plays just the Aiku here and blocks one of my uh, minions, uh, it's going to be very hard for him to, to prevent me from top decking lethal, either in the form of uh, racers or even just killing the Aiku and swinging in for lethal somehow. So, uh, the opponent is not in a good spot here. Uh, the opponent had just used his uh, his misanthropy, and he has to deal with a second carry board, especially since the opponent is now going to be at six life. And uh, they decide to stun the Terragon and play the two twins. I think I'm not really sure if I prefer the twins or uh, or the Ico here, but I think the opponent was dead anyway. Anyway, with the top deck of Bracer. Uh, we should note that the bone cruelty here used here gives us lethal with the overrun item and all the items, all the other items. Uh, yeah, so this Coxinga just just dominated the game between killing an Aiku and uh, and killing two Autocam artifacts and uh, and finishing the game. So th this just highlights how good Coxinga is. And uh, I will, I'm going to show a second game that I had as well. Alright, so this is the second game, which is against Mysterion, and he's playing red-blue mid-range. And again, the opponent just goes, uh, just starting out as normal, and I always prefer to remove the pop early, as it can really just snowball the game with all the live gain and puts me at a health disadvantage. And this was a big mistake by the opponent. Never do that against uh, purple, especially since this is just a one, two, it dies to, to a racer. Uh, Coliseum can afford to do that since their, 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 their Freaky Sidecar can be a two, three sometimes. But yeah, um, it's just, I, didn't, I don't flip this here and I don't, I don't really want to use my Biting Blade as I expect this is a matchup. I might have to use the Biting Blade for, and I'm not really just in a hurry to flip disc. And in any way, um, there's something that should be noted again when playing against uh, red decks in particular, or even purple decks, and decks with rush to play infuse, is that we need to be careful of damage thresholds because uh, this is a deck that plays decently beefy stuff. The so Slayer is going to be work against us as well, so we need to be careful to keep the disc state in, in a state that is always more beneficial to us than to the opponent. Uh, so keeping a 4 health minion on board with the disc on Slayer, it allows the a, a, a trapezes to trade into it with Infuse, which is really bad for us. We need to, keep, to always keep this in mind, it's part of the... It's a part of the the skill that's required for to piloting this deck effectively, knowing when to keep the disc, when to activate disc, and knowing when are certain disc activations beneficial or not for us. So I decide I I am not flipping disc because I'm not in a hurry. I might get a powerful ram in any time, and I don't flip the disc for free. I know the 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 disc flip right now is free, but uh, yeah, uh, I prefer not to keep it. At day, especially since I wouldn't know when would be the next time I'd be able to flip it, and uh, the opponent might get more value from it. 
Yeah, so this is one of the times that I just I just play it, and I don't trade in because because if I traded in, I wouldn't get the uh, the, the item. Uh, so if it was the opponent to trade in, maybe I think playing just playing the sword saint attacking with the sword saint wouldn't allow the opponent to gain that one life. But it's kind of it's really not clear what is the correct play or not. Um, here I could have played the racer and just stack, but then I don't have any other play for the rest of the turn. I just uh, uh, I I would be floating four mana. I might try to flip this twice and maybe find something to play. I prefer to play the Jinsuk here and just take a favorable trade for me and uh, uh, force the opponent to still deal with the 3 2 body and the 0 5 on the night market. And the opponent deals with the, uh, with, with the, with, with the 3 2, but I'm actually kind of. Um, I was kind of suspicious that the opponent is going to have something in hand because they didn't deal with the, with the Jinsuk. I was thinking that they had the, the, the Gigantomachia in hand and they had a no better way. They didn't have a better way to kill the Jinsuk than that. So I, did, I decided not to play the Terragon and go instead for the Barkeep and even block with the Barkeep because uh, expecting the opponent to have the Giganto. And I, I ended up discarding the Biting Blade as really the opponent isn't putting that much pressure on. And I just valued the the the, uh, the draw here, especially since I was convinced that Giganto was coming, and Giganto Giganto came when I expected it to come. And uh, I played the Terragon ag aggressively. I was only worried about a Seven Ring Ritual here because uh, Seven Ring Ritual is very hard for this deck to deal with. If I don't have a Lantern Colossus early or a Pentacle or some way to deal with it. Summoning Ritual just back breaking for Mono Purple to deal with. Uh, but here I just decide to. I don't have a good way to deal with it anyway, so I'm just gonna uh, develop a good minion and get a lot of the items that could be good for the draws and finishing off the game with Smite. And the opponent. Uh, I don't think this usage of, uh, of the Historian is correct, and this is for uh, Mana Historian, by the way. Uh, which is uh, something that I was really... Uh, I don't know if the buff is good or not. Uh, the nerf, I mean, is good or not. But I think uh, it was definitely too strong. It was uh, too oppressive and too strong that I, I'm really in favor of getting nerf. I'm not really sure if 4 mana, 2-3 is the correct way to nerf this. Um, So we just uh, draw to find better stuff to do, and we got the Lantern Colossus. And I'm not really afraid of anything here, because I know the opponent just used Gigant, so I can just do whatever I want here. He doesn't have a good way to deal with any of my stuff. Uh, if this was Red Orange, I would be more afraid for something like uh, Angel. But even then, this would be this would still be the play just to develop to get the Emulation Clock for the uh, for the. Uh, for the, for the eventual Seven Ring Ritual that I was expecting. But yeah, uh, the opponent just doesn't have a good way to deal with this. And he decides to deal with the Terragon. And here is where uh, pen, I, I draw Pentacle of Flavors. And uh, it's, it's just, just it just shows how much Pentacle of Flavors you can just carry the game. This already has Native Overrun and the Pentacle is just going to deal a ton of damage here. And the opponent doesn't have a really good way to deal with it. Uh, but I decide to wait a little bit and uh, just wait for what's going to happen. Uh, I used the Emulation Cloak here on the God of Gamers to kill this since it's winter. I could move the God of Gamers where if it's uh, if if I'm expecting a uh, if if the opponent just plays a Seven Ring Ritual, but I don't think playing Seven Ring Ritual here is is favorable for the opponent at all. So I can already push a lot of damage with the with the pearl and the and and the native overrun of the lantern colossus. We the, the opponent is pretty much just forced to deal with these two threats, and the opponent just can't deal with both of them without having uh more without having uh, two uh, wings there. And uh, yeah, this is where I just go all in on the finishing the game early. Uh, the pentacle here just deals. This is just one health, so I think we just deal. Uh, this just does 
six dam seven damage to face, I believe. And I buff it for good measure. And uh, that buff was really meant so that I can get a land a second land cross. If the opponent manages to do this somehow and he plays the severing ritual, I can just get a second land cross and get the second uh, immolation cloak. And but here I'm really more concerned with uh, with finishing the game rather than uh, rather than uh, uh, rather than just letting the game last longer. The opponent is at eight and he doesn't really have a way to do anything here except maybe except trade the trapezes here with the Goat Saint. But here it's just game here with all the pikes that I have and I even draw draw the second uh, pentacle. Not that it matters, but I have so much damage here. This is already. Uh, this is already uh, how much damage is seven. I'm really, I really don't, I really don't want to do the math here. But it's, it's sleeping. You just use all the items. I didn't, I didn't calculate it, but I was like 100% sure it was lethal. Even the smite there, which is full damage of uh, over lethal. Yeah, this just shows the uh, the deck in action against. Uh, and it's yellow green, which is one of the most dominant decks in the meta, and uh, red blue, which is not really as dominant, but it's a good, it's a it's it's a fine mid range deck as well. Um, uh, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, please leave a like and subscribe, and I I hope to see you in my next video. Thank you for watching.